Good day. Today we're going to be installing fritzing on the Raspberry Pi and we'll be testing it out and uh, ordering up a board that we create on it today. So let's get started. Alright, so when you first start with fritzing, the first thing you're going to want to do is get it installed. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're just going to open up terminal here. And I'm just going to bring that over here. I am using the Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte version for this here. I am running dual monitors on this so that way I can watch my recording of the screen as well as work on the screen. Alright, so we're going to go sudo apt get install fritzing. Hit enter and then it's going to go ahead and install the package that we need for it. And there we go, we should have it installed. So the first thing that we want to do is just go to the Raspberry Pi icon here, go to programming, and there it is right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and load it up the first uh, time that you load it up. It does take a little bit, but once you get it going, you'll have no issues. All right, so there we go. We have it all started here. So what I like to do, I do a lot of work on the breadboard. So for me, I am terrible at times with schematic reading. So I tend to love the fact that Fritzing has the breadboard builder. So that way I can basically copy the uh, design I made on a breadboard and have the board made up. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a simple uh, hat for the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to do two of them, one with one LED on it and another with a series of LEDs on it. And uh, then we'll go ahead and get those sent off to be uh, done up. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to the breadboard here. And we can just zoom out on it here. That way we can make room for the Raspberry Pi that we want to connect to it. So I'm just going to go to the search up top here. And once this is all done, I'll go ahead and type in Raspberry Pi. You can scroll down to it, but for me, I just usually like to search for it because sometimes multiple boards come up with the same name. So Raspberry Pi, hit enter. And as you can see, we could design for multiple different Raspberry Pis here. For this one, uh, we're just going to grab this one here. And we will just import it in. And there we go. So now I can go ahead and, oh, control Z that. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll just go here. And then we'll move that over a bit. I think we can, can we not move this. Yeah, there we go. Now we can move it. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to build our circuit. So for this one, we are going to do the most common one. It's going to be uh, just a simple uh, LED board with uh, a resistor on it. And uh, we will be able to get it printed up just so you can see how easy and what it looks like on the breadboard here, what it looks like in the schematic view, and then the PCB view and then we'll export the Gerber file and we'll send it off to oh I don't know I'll figure out which one I want to send it to but uh, I've used one company where I built my one uh, res or not my Raspberry Pi my Arduino SD AC or SDAC uh, version 1.0 and uh, here's a little clip of it here as you can see it's nice and shiny I had a lot of fun with 
building that it was kind of cool to take something from a breadboard to a perf board to uh, an actual product so that was kind of cool and I was able to incorporate everything I wanted all on to the one board instead of having multiple boards and it was just a simple audio circuit uh, an LM386 board with uh, an SD card audio uh, player. If you do not know your pins for your GPIO if you hover over the pin it will tell you exactly what the pin is so this is quite handy so if you do not want to go here and go pin out so you can see here we have the pin out for our raspberry pi and this means like this will start three volts here and up here will be the five volts and then five volts ground and then yeah three volts gpio 2 gpio 3 and this will give you more understanding of where you're going to want to link everything to so as we can see pin 6 is the ground so we're going to go ahead and take that one and that's going to be this guy here and we're just going to bring it over to the ground on the breadboard here now I'm just going to go ahead and do that and then I'm just going to make it a little bit prettier all right so now we need we're going to take an LED let's see if they have just a basic LED here and Oh, we're still loading up. Um, so we could definitely try different LEDs. We don't have to just go with your standard LED, but for today we're going to just use the regular uh, that should be Those look like six and they look pretty much the same so I'm just gonna grab one so I'm just gonna put that here for right at the moment so I want to so when looking at this here you can see uh, it's pretty much a little bit hard to tell which end is the cathode and the anode uh, so basically which one's positive which one goes to negative when you buy an LED the uh, Cathode is going to be the short lead and the anode is going to be the long So basically how you can tell is it's usually the bigger end on the inside of the LED that is the ground and so that means we want to move this guy over because we're going to want to run our power to this one here. Look at that cathode pin. So that's pretty good. And this should say anode. There we go. So we know that uh, the cathode is the shorter one. And the long one is the anode. So this one here will be ground. Once again you can look inside and tell not all the time is that going to be the case but for the most part the bigger one is going to be going down to the cathode so now what we want to do is i'm just going to actually take the ground plane here put it down here and then i'm going to take my positive line and put it down here so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to move, um, yeah, we can keep that there because it's coming here, down here, we'll work with that. So now what we want to do is we want to run, uh, from the ground, we want to run uh, a resistor on the cathode so this pin here we're going to want to run a resistor from here 
to here and for that we can use a bunch of different values but uh, for this one we're going to use uh, 330 so I'm going to see if that will come up no save resistor Well, for this, we will just use a 220 ohm resistor. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this guy here, and then I'm just going to click on it, and um, go. Oh, should have been 90. There we go. So now I should be able to go like that. So now I have the resistor connected to the cathode, the negative, the right being the anode, which will be our positive line running to our power. So for this one, we could do a couple of different things. We could have, um, it depends on our power. So if we're running a three volt LED, we're going to want to run it off the three volt line. Uh, but for this one, we will be using the five volt power line. And for that, we will just go like that. Now oh, we'll go like this. So I'm just going to go, um, you know what, we'll just go like, like that, and then we'll just lift this up here, bring that up here, and then we should be able to change the wire color, so we want this one to be red and this one to be blue because that's got our ground plane one right so i'm just going to go ahead change the wire color here to red this one here is good to be that color and then all i'm going to do is run from anywhere along this line here down to the power rail here so i could pick any of those it's all as you can see, all of them light up. That means it's all connected. And then I will just go like, now we'll make it look a little weird. So we can go like this, like that. And there we go, we have a simple LED circuit here. But wait, that's not what we wanted to do. We need to actually take this ground here. So basically what this circuit will do will be to keep the LED always on. So this would be great if you wanted to use it as like a status LED for your Raspberry Pi. Uh, but for this, we want to be able to program this LED over uh, Python or whatever language we want to access the GPIO. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go to pin... Oh, what's this guy? That's ground pin. We're going to go ahead and move this pin here to pin 18, which is this one here. So I'm just going to grab this guy, move it here, move that here. So this is going to be the simplest way to actually be able to program this LED because we're going to be able to set our voltage, like our output through this in our script. So that is pretty sweet there. So this is one of them. 
Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the schematic now. Now here's the schematic. As you can see, it is a bit all over the place. There we go. So now we can make our little circuit here. So I'm just going to go like this. And then I'm going to take this wire here. And we're just going to move it to this here. And we'll just, we'll just make it a little bit nicer. This guy right here. All right, so we've got that one. And then we want this wire here, here, this wire right to here. So now we actually have a completed circuit, and we can change the wire color as well if you're not sure. So this would be ground. And then this one over here would be our red wire, right? So I could go red and then change this one to blue because that's what we used on the other one. So that's our common ground color throughout this. Just so we know exactly where that is. So there we go, we have the schematic done up. So now the next step will be to do the PCB design. So as you can see here, this is great for learning how to read a schematic. Now you can actually tell that this is a resistor and this is the symbol for an LED. But make sure you always have a resistor on your LED, that way you're going to protect your Raspberry Pi. That's the main thing. If you hook a, an LED up to a circuit that's not in the GPIO, you're just playing around with LEDs. If you don't have one, not the end of the world. Worst thing you're going to do is wreck the LED, but you want that resistor there. So once we have all that done there, all we have to do, you can play around with all this stuff here. I'm just showing you basically the basics here. We could flip things around move things around, make it all pretty, but we don't need to rate at the moment just because it is only a resistor and an LED. All right, on to the PCB design here. So we have a few things that is really nice is we can actually have the Raspberry Pi here. And this is gonna be our actual board. So we can actually move these pieces wherever we want. There we go. So we can have it so that this goes here. Okay. There we go. So why is that not going to where it needs to? Cathode, anode. So this needs to go to here. And this needs to go to ground. And then this one here, we want to actually rotate um, 90 degrees, so that way we have that there, and then we can put this on the pin 18.
you know what? We can actually put that on to... Yeah, we want that on this one. Okay, and then we can actually move things around. Make it all pretty like. Make it very basic. Give you lots of room to be able to remove this guy here if you choose to um, so now we have that we can actually add our uh, text to it as well okay so that's the top layer okay which parts not connected that's connected let's try this auto root going on here something's going on here let's go back to the schematic for a minute and it's on there okay that's all one that's one so what's this line here something's not right there let's try a different resistor Let's try this guy. Oh. Okay. So let's see how that looks. That might look better. I don't know why that one resistor was doing that. So once again. Uh, this looks like not a through hole that I wanted so I'm just going to go back to the breadboard I'm gonna get rid of that guy and so now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the holes on it So that's showing SMD. Okay, well, let's try it again. Put that in there, rotate uh, 90 degrees. And then we're just going to plop that guy right in there. And we'll go check our schematic again. And for some reason, that looks better. So now we just go from there to there, from there to there. There we go. That looks a little bit better. For some reason, there was a line uh, connection that went through there. That could have totally been me, but uh, we'll just blame it on something else. So now I should be able to come over here. Grab my resistor and then. so at this point as long as we're on one of the ground planes we're fine so I'm just gonna put this here and then I'm gonna take this guy here and move him up just a little bit to be in line with that and then I'm just going to go ahead and bring that over here. Looks like that. This is the basic uh, layout there. Okay, we'll go like that. And we can go here. Edit. LED. Pin did we put that on? Pin 18. 
right? On pin 18. Right? Um, our GPIO 18. Okay. Uh, on GPIO 18. Perfect. And then we can go here. Now all we have to do is we can go silk screen image and we can make that as big as we want since we're used spritzing we'll have their logo um, and then we can throw we can do something like that all right so we can do that here and then in the bottom right we'll go down to the text here and then we can put like that and now it will actually do our writing and then we can adjust the size of that I'm going to make it something like that. Okay, so now if I wanted to, I can import other images. It doesn't have to just be uh, the fritzing logo here, but for this one we're going to leave that on there because that's great uh, But to change that you should be able to well, I guess we could try So let's go like this And let me find All right, so I saved that to my desktop. So let's go ahead and load that up and we're just going to go by desktop, there it is, open, and then it should change that. But it looks like it's pretty massive, so I might have to try a black background with white uh, outlinings on the pie. So as you can see here, this is kind of the rendering it does here, but I don't think we'll use, we'll, we won't put the Raspberry Pi logo on here, I think that's a little not so cool, for right at the moment anyways, I'm not sure. Actually you know what, let's just put that down there, how about that? That looks kind of okay like it's allowed. So all I'm going to do is now that I have my text here I can uh, do anything else underneath here that I want because I have these two. So uh, what I'm going to basically do is I'm just going to... Are you recording? Totally going to put that in. Thanks for the sound bite. Are you back in a video? If you haven't hit that like button, make sure to do so now. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, you know what to do. Alright, so at this point, I think I'm just going to call this one good here. This is going to be just a simple one. Uh, I won't go too much into the actual... Uh, doing both sides of the board, all that kind of stuff. We're just going to keep it simple. I do believe I have to adjust my bottom here just a little bit. I'll figure that out here shortly. But for now, we're going to call this good. 
All right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to set our workpiece here. So all we're going to do is select that there, delete that, and then we should be able to go up to search here. So we're going to search for Raspberry Pi. And we're looking for the PCB layout, the hat, Raspberry Pi Shield. So let's go ahead and try that. No, nope, that's not the one we want. That looks a little bit better. So I'm just going to line that all up there. So now if you want to have your so I'm just gonna all right so here's the thing if you want We're good now. All right. So that's how you're going to do that. Uh, instead of drawing that border around it and then trying to do the rounded corners. Now, with this, we do not get the actual drill holes for this. So we would actually have to add the drill holes to this if we really wanted to uh, have it so we could screw it on, um, or like, uh, screw it onto the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so all we would do, I usually just search for hole. Now the hole that's on here is predefined at 2.2 millimeters. Uh, so that's uh, this guy right here is the hole diameter. But now we gotta get that snap to grid off. So align to grid, we want to turn that off here. And then now we should be able to drag that into there. So you're going to want to do one at a time when you do this. So you can kind of play with it like this. Get it to where you want it. Zoom in on that. And it's pretty close to being right will get a little bit better. So you have two options here. You can use this 2.2 hole, uh, but if you really want, you can adjust the size of the hole. So to do that, all we're gonna do is get this somewhat where we want it. It's definitely a game of patience. You can spend forever on it. So all I'm going to do is go down on the right here and I'm going to go to hole diameter. I'm going to set that to 2.5. Hit enter and then now you can see it's kind of got a little bit bigger. So now I can actually put that on the hole properly. Maybe. Yes, as long as it's pretty darn close to it. So that's how we would get that profile for being able to get the actual holes there. And then we would just have to go around to each of them and do that on each of them. Uh, but this one, I don't think I'm going to add those, so I'm just going to get rid of that guy. And yeah, that's basically it. This is the, um, yeah, kind of a simple way to do that. So as you can see here, uh, the line here is crossing over the other GPIO pin. So that's going to cause us some issues. Um, 
So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to actually change our um, hole diameter, or not our hole diameter, but we want to select uh, the line here. And then we're going to actually take it from the standard line here and we're going to make it super fine. And we're going to do the same with the other ones here. So I'm just going to go ahead and select them. Oh, bottom layer. Let's go to top layer. Select that. Put that to 8. But I'm going to set that to the bottom layer. All this stuff I'm going to put on the bottom layer. So we'll go there. Bottom layer. So now that should be pretty good there. So this is our pin 39. So this is our ground pin. And it's coming to our resistor. And then over to the cathode. And then to the anode of our circuit on the pin 18. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to zoom in on this guy here. I'll bring it up. And now there's a couple of things that we can do here. We could go to routing and go to auto route and it should find its way around everything but I find most of the time it doesn't want to um, work the way it wants to. So both layers selected here. Now I can adjust this. So all I'm going to do is just route it around here and we can go ahead and just go to design rules check here and then it's going to bring up this box here it's going to say it's overlapping bottom layer so we got to fix that so where are we overlapping well usually it will tell us uh, or show us a little piece of red on there oh you know what i'm going to actually change the size of this guy to eight mil as well so all I'm going to do is adjust this guy a little bit and maybe put this guy, try to get it as through that hole as uh, best I can. Now I'm going to go uh, do design rule check once again and we'll see. There we go. So there was a little bit in there that was actually overlapping. So now we're good. Now we can actually just export it and be able to get this guy printed up. So I'm not too worried about the holes on there. This is kind of just a demo board. So I'll probably just get about five of them done just to have them for examples, toss them around, let people try it out, whatever. If you do want to purchase any of the boards I make throughout any of my videos, uh, eventually I'll have something up where you can actually do that and I'll put together some little uh, kits for you and then you can follow along with the projects that I am working on. So now all we're going to do now is we are going to just have a look here. So there's our schematic and we just want to double check and you can save the pictures from these if you want and uh, have them for reference so if you want to uh, put it on whatever your website or you're showing someone how to make a, a circuit properly on it and how to do those kind of simple projects then you're able to do that the great thing about uh, fritzing that I like is we're able to design it on the breadboard here uh, once we've done our prototype in real life build it on here and then go over to here and be able to see the actual symbols for all the components so this is going to start to train our brain to read those and schematics 
So we're going to know a little bit more than we did before by making these with uh, parts because some people prefer not to read schematics but just be able to build it on a breadboard or perf board uh, but sometimes you might need someone else to have a look at your work and they might be like hey toss me the schematic I'll have a look at it. Sometimes it'll be good for you to learn how to read those or the basic components anyways. So one thing we didn't cover is the code. This is where we could actually input the Arduino code and be able to upload. Um, but I don't think there is. There isn't one for Python or anything like that. I don't think. There's no Raspberry Pi, lily pads, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so there's nothing really worthwhile in there. You can just put your code in there for... Uh, your Python script if you want to save it just so you have for reference uh, but it's not needed uh, just put a text file in your folder that uh, you're going to create and save it for later alright so we have this now let's go ahead and export it and we want to export it for production and then we want this extended Gerber RS274X so I'm going to go ahead and select that and I'm just going to go back to my single LED and I'm going to choose that folder and it should take a moment and then it will actually do that once we do this there's one more step that we have to take I'm going to show you that here in just a moment um, but I'll show you quickly how to save those uh, those uh, like the screen here as uh, a picture here so so if we go export as image and then we'll just go to PNG um, and then save I already have it in there and then we can go to uh, the schematic here and then we can go file export as image PNG or whatever you choose if you're putting it on, on a website or something you're probably going to want a PNG file so we'll just do that and then we'll do the breadboard uh, file export as image PNG save and as, as you can see there is tons of different options we can do we can um, do a list of parts uh, all that kind of stuff so if I bring that up and I can save that so once I go into my single LED folder here so I have the main file here this is my save for the program itself uh, my design file for Fritzing um, I did do another one for an 8 LED so I will do that up and we'll have a look at that later on and you can see how you can kind of grow from just playing with a, a simple uh, project like this and as you can see down here we have the single LED PCB picture down here we have the schematic down here and we have the breadboard image here and then our bill of materials is right here which will bring up uh, a little HTML web page and it'll let us know exactly what we need for our shopping list so that's kind of cool uh, so when it comes to the shopping list you know like we're not gonna need a Raspberry Pi 3 we already have one but we're gonna make sure we get our LED and our resistor now, like I was saying, the resistor, uh, you can use a 220, uh, a 330, uh, or whatever you want. Just try a few different ones out. You can always change that resistor in there. Uh, but have fun and see what happens when you do use different uh, resistors in that circuit there. But just always remember to have one in it. So now that we have all these items here, all we're going to do is select the bottom file and then we're going to go right up to here 
highlight all that stuff. I'm just tossing this all into the zip file. So all I'm going to do is right click, compress, and then if you have not uh, installed uh, zip on your Raspberry Pi, make sure to do that. Uh, I, I can definitely go over that, but uh, uh, for this video is becoming a little bit long, so if you need, let me know and I will show you how to install zip. So that way you can upload your um, Gerber file all into one shot here. So single LED um, dot zip, and then we're gonna go to our desktop and save that in our single LED. Uh, so I'm gonna go create, and there we go, single LED dot zip. So the last and final thing to do is we need to get it printed. So uh, I, I use personally is JLC PCB. I find I don't mind waiting 20 to 30 days for shipping. Um, and you know, I get five boards for the same price as anywhere else I'd get, you know, less amount. So to me, I don't mind waiting. So all I'm gonna do is jlpcb.com and uh, show you here quickly so all you're gonna want to do is you're gonna go to quote now if you haven't created an account make sure you just make sure you sign in create an account and get quote now and then we are going to upload our file and now it wants your Gerber file. So only accept zip or RAR max 10 megs, megabytes. So that's where we want to have that zip file. I do not think uh, it does. Uh, I don't think I have. Uh, oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to. Let's So I just want to see, uh, compress, so do we have a RAR in here? No we don't, so we're going to have to use it. And I think I had to install it earlier on, I'm not 100% sure, but you can always just throw all of them onto a USB drive and then uh, put them on a Windows machine to quickly zip them up into a file there. So, all right, so let's have a little look here. So we're gonna add our file and we are gonna, uh, and we are going to go to the single LED one here. And that was the single LED zip file that we just created. I'm not too sure why that one's bigger than that one. Alright, whatever. We'll open that guy up. And as you can see, we get a nice calculated price of $2.78, but shipping is, well, not cheap. So, depends on how quick you want it, but, uh, I'm just going to show you this. I have already ordered this file and the 8 LED version. So there we go. So it's going to show us the front and the back. And we can go to the Gerber viewer and look around the board, make sure everything is the way we want it. We can select all the options of what we want for the most part what's there is going to work absolutely fine. Uh, it measures the actual dimensions of the board so you don't have to uh, enter it. I know a lot of other uh, companies uh, will require you to have your dimensions of your board so if you do need it for another site uploading to here will give you a lot of the information from your Gerber files before you, you know so that way you can uh, use another website. But I recommend using JLC PCB. 
Uh, they haven't done me wrong so far, so I've been enjoying them. And that's it. There's our simple LED. Um, but it should be on, yeah, 18. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Everything's routed there. That looks good. Alright, so that is it for me. That's the tutorial for installing, setting up, and going right to the process of ordering your first PCB uh, online. So if you have any questions, make sure to post them in the comments section below. Uh, like I said, if you're interested in these boards, let me know. I will have them probably available at some time. I'm just trying to build a little database of boards and that before I actually start uh, putting them out there uh, for people to uh, get their hands on. So I have ordered a few of the other ones. So if you're interested, let me know and uh, we can definitely work something out to get you on. Thanks for watching everyone. You have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time. Take care, eh?